Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Fanshawe's virtual open house session on broadcasting radio and media production. Uh, my name is Elliot and I work here in the marketing department at the college. Um, I'm going to be the host for the session today and we've got uh, Abe here from the Faculty of Creative Industries in the School of Contemporary Media. Uh, thanks for joining us Abe. Um, he's going to uh, help us out with some Q&A uh, shortly. Um, so before we get started, um, a couple of uh, quick housekeeping notes uh, from me. Um, all of your mics uh, and cameras are off right now, um, so if you have any questions, please submit them through the question feature in GoToWebinar. Um, we'll address them at the end of the presentation. Um, so we've got a video that we're going to play for you that's about uh, 17 minutes. Um, feel free to pump in as many questions as you want throughout uh, that time, and we'll uh, do our best to get to all of them once the video wraps up. Um, if you have any other uh, programs or applications open right now, we'd recommend closing them just so that it doesn't uh, compromise your experience. Um, but that's that's up to you, of course. Um, I think that is it uh, for housekeeping. So I'm going to uh, get us started with the video. Hi there, welcome to the Broadcasting Radio and Media Production Info Session. My name is Abe Kalechin and I am a professor and the coordinator of the program. We have a jam-packed session for you today with a few guests popping in to share their experiences uh, in our program. So let's get right into it because we have a lot of information to share with you. The Broadcasting Radio and Media Production program is a two-year, very hands-on practical program with a September-only intake. So as you'll hear from some of our students, we are not an announcing school. A lot of people think that that's all we do is we teach you how to be on the air. That is not the case. There are so many different areas in the radio station that we teach you about and that you can actually specialize in and more on that a little bit later. So in this program, especially in first year, uh, you will learn about every department that's involved in creating engaging, exciting and entertaining radio content for both online and terrestrial uh, broadcasting. Having said that, first year is not just academics. There is a practical component to it as well. So for example, during the day, uh, the morning and the early afternoon, you're going to learn about radio sales, promotions, marketing, uh, radio production, announcing, writing, uh, show preparation, voice development, talk radio, and a few other things as well. While you're learning how to use the equipment through these classes, and while you're learning how to be on the air and how to piece together a talk show and how to do a podcast, you'll start performing in the evening hours on our closed circuit and streaming radio stations, CFRL and The Falcon. So your daytime hours will be spent in class. Your afternoons and evenings, when you're not scheduled to be on the air, you'll spend in the studio practicing what you've learned and practicing with the equipment so that you become a little more proficient at using them. And then also once or once a week and sometimes once every other week, depending on the number of students we have, uh, you will be doing a two hour live show on either CFRL or the Falcon. So you'll be able to apply the skills that you're learning in those classes to those practical uh, performances. You'll also learn about the different software packages that we use. So uh, Adobe Audition or iMedia Touch Production, iMedia Touch On Air. Um, and all of these come together to help you put together that two hour show in, uh, in your first year of studying. Um, by the way, all of this work is evaluated in your classes as well. So it's not just, yeah, I'm just going to be on the air for two hours. No, it's, it's an actual assignment that you are doing when you are on the air. Uh, and so those will be evaluated. Now, to tell you a bit more about the first year experience, this is Ben, who is currently a first year radio student. Well, I'm going to tell you what I think about the pacing of the program, uh, the workload of it, the studio practice time, and a few other things in there. Now, obviously, it's a little different because of COVID-19, but it wasn't really as bad as I thought it would be because of it. Because, like, I originally came to college thinking I may not get as much as 
I paid for. Like, you, you know, like, come on, with COVID-19 restrictions, I'm not going to get what I wanted. But I've been getting pretty good teaching right now. Like, everything. Um, there's been a few things here and there, you know, like, oh, there's been a technical glitch trying to get into class for one day, but it's fixed later. Or uh, assignment didn't load properly, that's all right. But other than that, it's really not not that bad. And I'm very impressed with Fanshawe being able to get around it. So I found the pacing of the program actually very good. They don't start off too slow, but they don't throw you into the fire right away. They start building up quickly to give you the right headspace, I think. You know, like, this isn't going to be back-breaking work, but you are going to have to pick up the pace and work. And it works out. Like, if you actually put the work in, you do very well. You, you have to put the work in, but the course pays off. It's really good, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. I also find the workload manageable. Again, it can be a lot, but they do give you time to do it. It is doable, and if you need help, it is there. So you can always get help if you need it. And with the with COVID, I thought it'd be difficult to get hands-on experience with the with the you know the equipment of everything, the soundboards, the microphones, the software for everything you need at a radio station. But it's actually all available still. You know, there's more safety precautions in place, but I you get plenty of time to practice with it. You get plenty of good instructions from the teachers on how to do it, what you're supposed to do. If there's a problem, you can immediately contact someone to fix the problem. Like it's very well done. Uh, I've been to college before for nursing, but um, so it's not related much. But I love this college experience way more than that one. I find the teachers are much more helpful, way better communication, way, way better time management here too, because they help you with that. Like it's very, very cool here. And I am very pleased with choosing this program and I don't regret it in the slightest. So I hope to see you here sometime soon at Fanshawe and hopefully I'll hear you on the radio. Have a good one. Thanks, Ben. So obviously we don't know what the fall of 2021 will look like with respect to COVID protocols. But as you heard from Ben, innovation is strong at Fanshawe. And we have found a way to replicate the in-class hands-on experience in a virtual and safe way in case those COVID protocols do continue. The video you are seeing right now was taken from a class I taught during the week of October 25th. The students are able to see the equipment and learn how to use it through my demonstration and learn how to use the software packages we use as well. Essentially, they are seeing exactly what they would be seeing as though they were in class. The difference is they're watching from home as opposed to watching sitting at a desk in the same room. It's now up to them, up to the individual student to book studio time and come in and practice what was demonstrated in class. I've asked another first year radio student to put together a video to share with you his experience so far in our program. Please welcome Patrick. I just wanted to make this video to kind of give you an idea of what the radio broadcasting program at Fanshawe is kind of all about and uh, what it's like to be a mature student going back to school uh, after being out of it for so long. And um, the first thing I'm gonna say is that as a mature student, there's two things I was really worried about, money and being able to socialize with my classmates. And both those things um, I was kind of wrong about, to be honest with you. Um, as a mature student, there are financial resources available to you through OSAP, bursaries, and that kind of thing. Look into them and take advantage of them. Um, and socially, you're all there for radio, whether you're 20 years old, 30 years old, or you know, 70 years old. You're all there for with one thing in common, and that thing is going to bond you and unite you, and you're going to be spending a lot of time with your classmates because you all have the same classes together and that is also going to bond you. Um, after the first week, I'd already made friends and these people are going to be someone that you're going to lean on for studying. They might be people you lean on when you're done school to get jobs. You never know, right? Um, but you're going to make friends. Don't worry about it. I'm going to touch on real quick is that this program is a difficult program. 
Uh, I don't mean that to be intimidating. I mean that in a good way because that Fanshawe College diploma carries weight when you're done. Um, if you look up people in radio, morning show hosts, you know, in bigger markets and across the country, uh, get on their LinkedIn page. You'll see Fanshawe College on there. Um, and that's for a reason they're successful is because this program demands a lot out of you because they want you to be a good broadcaster. Um, you're going to be studying a lot. You're going to go into the lab a lot. You're going to put a lot of hard work in, but it is very rewarding hard work. And the end result is that you're going to be a great broadcaster. So be prepared to do a lot of hard work, but it's fun work too. It's radio. Radio is not like you're working in a coal mine for 12 hours a day. You get to do some cool stuff, but be prepared to do hard work. Be prepared to study. Be prepared to put your hours in, in the lab. Be prepared to have fun. Um, and you're going to have a great time at Fanshawe College. You'll have a great time with this program. Fanshawe College is a great time. I do not regret my decision whatsoever. And I hope that maybe some of you will be joining me in radio. Have a good one. In 1978, we were very fortunate to have been granted the first Canadian campus instructional license by the CRTC, the Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission. As a result of that license, we, and by we, I mean potentially you, uh, will operate our fully licensed radio station once you hit second semester or first year, CIXX FM, or the X, which is found at 106.9 on the FM band and streaming online at 106. .com. Now, the program itself, however, started with a college system in 1968. As Patrick mentioned in his video, we have a long list of graduates currently working in the industry and now actually retiring from the industry. It's these same graduates that are looking at Fanshawe to fill positions at their stations. They know the rigor and training our students receive. In fact, we get our direction from industry. We meet with our program advisory committee twice a year to make necessary curriculum tweaks to make sure that our students are receiving not just a great education, but the necessary preparation they'll need to be able to walk through the doors of any radio station and start working right away. You may be asking yourself, how exactly do we achieve that tall order over two years? Well, I've asked a current second year student, Emma, to share her experiences with you. My name is Emma and I'm in my second year of radio broadcasting. Um, second year is a lot different than first year. First year, I find that you're always doing uh, work for your courses. So everything you do is around the courses that you're taking. Whereas second year, yeah, you still do have courses and you're still learning. However, a lot of the learning is done by doing work for the radio station or for the X. It's really cool and it's such a cool opportunity to have to be able to actually do work, produce stuff, write stuff voice stuff, even like be on air for a real radio station, because I feel like that honestly gives you that real world um, scenario and feel. So you kind of know what to expect when you do finish school and when you do finish um, your work here at the college. I think it's so, so cool and so neat how we get to specialize in two things. So this semester, I chose to specialize in sales and in production. So for production, we're here doing um, work, so commercials, um, promos, all that stuff for the X, which is really cool because, I mean, what other job do you get to press a button and actually hear your work come to life? It's such a rewarding feeling, and it, it for me, it gets me so excited. I get super, super pumped when I hear my own stuff on air, so sometimes I'll record it and I'll send it to my friends or my family. I also, it's very interesting because I am one to hate production. When I first started in my first year, I absolutely hated it with a passion. I, oh, it's just so like, to me, it was computer based. I'm not a techie person. I never have been. I don't like technology. I prefer, you know, the old fashioned way. Like I still take notes, hand and like pen and paper. I don't like typing my notes. So I like things to be simple. So whenever I was introduced to the board, the computer, all the fancy equipment, I freaked out. And honestly, it's whenever you learn how to do it, it obviously gets easier. And that's what I needed. I needed to learn how to do it to calm myself down. And now it's just such a rewarding thing. Like I love doing it. And I get so excited when I produce something and I'm so proud of it. I always take a video of the audio and then I'll send it to a bunch of people. It is definitely rewarding. And I just love how you can go in a complete opposite direction of what you thought you were going into, which is definitely what happened to me because I mean, 
look at me, I'm in production, never in a million years would I have thought that I would be producing stuff. Because again, technology, not my strong suit. However, you learn, you grow, and that's how you become or discover new things about yourself. So to expand on what Emma was saying regarding second year, unlike first year, where the majority of your time is spent in class and learning about all of these different areas of the radio station, in second year, you are going to apply the knowledge that you learned in first year. The majority of your time is spent operating or working at our radio station. Emma spoke about station operations, so I'd like to explain that one in a little more detail. We are currently undergoing a small curriculum modification. So by the time that you make it to second year or year two, you will choose one specific area to specialize in during your first semester. Um, and in second semester, I'll talk about those in a second. In second semester of year two, you'll get to choose two areas as opposed to one. In order to graduate, you will need three station operations credits. So there are a total of seven different courses you could take as part of station operations. And these courses align with the departments of a radio station. They are announcing, writing, sales, promotions, production, talk, and programming. Each of those have a level one and a level two. So if, for example, you specialize in announcing in the first semester, then in second semester, you can specialize in two totally different courses or take level two of announcing and pick up one new level one station operations course. It's these courses in station operations that are going to give you the experience and training you will need to work in a radio station. So you could walk out of here with a little bit of expertise in three areas or you could really focus in on one specific area that really interests you and then take something new in second semester to learn a little more about that. We're just trying to give you a few more employable skills. With the curriculum change, we also have a new program title. So you will be part of the first group of graduates under our new name of Broadcasting, Radio and Media Production. As we meet with our program advisory committees and make changes to our curriculum, students are experiencing many transferable skills which can be applied in other areas. For example, one of our graduates from just a couple of years ago accepted a position as content creator or writer with Diply, which is a website um, and if, it's kind of like Buzzfeed. Another graduate is now with the Red Cross in Ottawa as their web and digital marketing strategist, yet they hold a broadcasting radio diploma. Our students learn Photoshop and Illustrator, as well as video editing. Radio isn't just radio anymore, it's forever changing and adapting, and we must too. Though radio is the focus of what we do, the skills you learn in this program can be applied across multiple platforms. Our students are getting jobs. In fact, often employers call us at Fanshawe first, even before the jobs are posted. And sometimes the jobs don't even get posted. The, there are jobs in radio, but there are also jobs out of radio where you can apply the skills that you learn in this program to those specific disciplines. If you wanna know a little more about radio specific jobs, you can always check out the website milkmanunlimited.com. It's exactly the way that it sounds. The jobs are there as long as you're willing to relocate. I'd like to thank Ben, Patrick, and Emma for joining us today. Uh, and also thank you for your time and for being here today. Okay, we're back. I hope everybody enjoyed that. Nice work, Abe. Thank you. Nice work. <laughs> uh, we are going to move into some Q&A right now. Um, so we've got uh, just a little over 10 minutes um, and we do have some questions that came in from our uh, attendees, so that's great. Um, as a reminder for anybody uh, still tuning in, you can submit, uh, submit questions via the chat uh, or, or question feature. Um, and if you think of anything after the fact, uh, you can email Fanshawe, pardon me, you can email myfuture at fanshawec.ca. Okay, that's myfuture at fanshawec.ca. Okay, uh, first question I want to jump into, Abe, we're going to put you in the, in the hot seat. Sure. Um, will I get the same level of education and experience with Fanshawe as compared to uh, a similar program at a university? Um, 
I think that the experiences from a university and the college are, are very different. I'm not sure that you're going to find a radio broadcasting program at a university. Um, so ours is a two-year program, and it's a very hands-on practical program. So, um, you know, there's, there's some theory involved, yes, and there are some academic classes involved as well. However, once you get past uh, first year, second year is 80 to 90 percent practical hands-on learning. So you're learning by doing. I'm not sure that you would get that at a university. Awesome. Uh, hopefully that clears that up. Um, following along uh, on that, what are the chances to get a job in radio um, after the program? Uh, I know you've mentioned that you've got a, a lot of success with, with recent grads. Um, can you touch on that for us? Sure. So, um, as I mentioned in the video, there's a website called milkmanunlimited.com, and they're also on Facebook. Uh, they, I mean, if you go there and you take a look at, at career opportunities on their website, there's a list of them. Um, and I like to usually say that every radio station has a for, for hire sign on their doors. Uh, uh, even though there isn't one you can visibly see, they usually have one on there anyway. It's invisible. Um, but there's always a job for, the, for, for very talented people, for anybody who wants to go into sales, they're always looking for people to to recruit and to have them uh, sell radio. The the caveat to that is that you have to be able to move. You have to be able to get out of mom and dad's basement. You need to be able to um, leave your hometown. You need to be able to uh, be willing to go to Fort McMurray, Alberta. You need to be willing to go to a small town, um, you know, uh, Saskatchewan. So, so you need you, you you have to be able to move in order to get those jobs, and then eventually you might find your way back here. I mean, not everybody can be like Brad Gibb, who's the brand manager at FM ninety six, is also a graduate of our program, who's been at FM ninety six for the last twenty years. Um, that's that's an unusual circumstance, but not to say it's impossible to happen. If you're talented and you you are persistent and you are resilient, uh, the jobs are there. You just, like I said, have to be willing to move. With flexibility comes opportunity. Absolutely. My put for the day. <laughs> I like it. Um, what about co-op and internship opportunities? Um, I know you, you probably can't build that into the program itself, but uh, what about industry opportunities, you know, with networking and, and whatnot? Surprisingly, we actually have built that into our program. So, um, Look at that. We learn something new every day. Uh, we're very fortunate in that we actually do have a fully licensed radio station. And so in second year, when I say that 80 to 90 percent of your learning is uh, practical hands on, that's because you are running our radio station. It doesn't really get any more real than that. When our students go out to um, sell a contract, uh, when they meet clients and, and they, um, they fill out a contract, real money is exchanged in, uh, for, for advertising. So um, because we have our fully licensed radio station, we actually don't have uh, a co-op per se. We do take part in the Larry Mini mentorship program. So um, some of our students are actually just getting their mentors now, and that creates a really nice link to, to uh, current broadcasters in the industry. Um, and then uh, they, can, they can connect and network. And a lot of their work is uh, critiqued by the people in the industry that they get connected with, and they grow and they learn from that as well. So that opportunity does exist. Um, and then we usually uh, will work with students and radio stations uh, if, if a student was to, to get a job offer before they, fi uh, they, they complete second year of the program, there is an early release policy uh, and there's a little more uh, involved, uh, a little, it, it, it's a little bit more than just that. So uh, the, the, the radio station would, be, would have to provide us some of the work that you do in order for us to be able to evaluate it in order for you to get your diploma. But the nice thing is that you can leave early if you do get full-time employment in the industry. So uh, there's that opportunity there as well. That's great. Okay, so just sort of to summarize, I guess, um, the, the co-op portion would be more through the, uh, the in-house station at the college, but there's lots of opportunity um, for networking through uh, the relationships that the program's built within the city and the area. Yes. Awesome. Okay, uh, we will move on. Um, we've got a question about uh, computer programming and equipment. What kind of gear do we need? So um, 
a lot of the software that you saw in the video, uh, you're not going to be able to get just because it is so industry specific. Uh, the, not to mention the fact that it's expensive and you don't really need to have your own version of it. Um, one of the things that, uh, that well, there, there are two things that, that, that we recommend students have. Number one is, an, is the office package, and that usually uh, is included uh, with your tuition. Uh, and because we are doing the remote learning now, uh, or the virtual classrooms, um, students also now get access to the Adobe Master Suite. So as long as you have both of those, uh, as long as you have your Word, uh, PowerPoint probably, just because you will have to put together some PowerPoint presentations, uh, and then if you have access to Adobe Audition, that's pretty much all that you really need to have uh, on your home computer or your laptop. The rest of the software, we have built our studios and our learning spaces so that they use the exact same software in every room and the hardware is exactly the same in every room so when you're learning in one studio you're able to apply that across every space that we have uh, and we have a fair amount of space between our two control rooms on the main floor and on our uh, teaching um, floor on the second floor of, of M building uh, and our two teaching studios, we run the exact same software, exact same versions in all of those. So it's really easy to uh, to learn in one one room and then apply it in another. That's awesome. Okay, we've got uh, about four minutes left, so we're gonna try and get through one or two more, just uh, being respectful of everybody's time. Um, how much coursework do we have outside of the classroom versus in class? So that's a great question. Um, in class, you're probably looking at around 20 hours a week. I can't remember right now because we did we are going through a bit of a curriculum modification there, which will take effect in September, but it'll be around 20 hours. Um, on top of that, there is studio time that you're going to have to book. So um, like I said, we're, we're a practical hands-on program. So in production and in announcing, you're going to be given assignments and tests where you need to use the equipment and the software uh, that are in the studio. So uh, in addition to your regular classes, you will have to come in, book studio time for an hour at a time, and then uh, practice the practical tests and the announcing assignments, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in addition to that, starting around week six or weeks, probably around week six, I'm going to say, uh, you start going on the air. So you'll start having a two hour show once maybe uh, once a week, maybe once every two weeks, depending on the number of students and the number of shows that we end up having. So um, and then there's the regular amount of homework that you would have to do for studying for some exams. Uh, I don't believe that there are any exams in second year, but there, there are a few uh, in first semester and then uh, one or two in second semester. Gotcha. Okay, uh, we've got about two minutes left. So we're gonna do, uh, we'll do one more quick one and then we'll wrap things up. Um, again, for anybody uh, tuning in, if you think of uh, anything after the fact, um, feel free to email uh, myfuture at fanshawc.ca. I've got it up on screen there, so hopefully you can see that now. Um, last question uh, about tuition costs. So what, what costs uh, are covered for a program like this with tuition? So as part of your tuition uh, and the fees that you pay, you have access to our teaching spaces. So the labs, the studios that you saw in the video with the board and the software. So uh, you can go in there and you can play and practice, uh, not to mention the fact that uh, you get to use our on-air studios as well. In addition to that, each student will be receiving uh, a set of headphones, uh, studio quality headphones, not like earbuds or anything like that. Um, and something new that we're starting in September, uh, part of it is, is for hygienic reasons, but everybody's going to be receiving their own individual mic sock. So that's, um, that's just a, like cool. a foam thing that goes on top, of your, uh, on top of the mic. And so you can pull it off when you're done. And then uh, that way you don't have to worry about uh, cross-contamination. Um, I'm surprised it actually took us this long to, to go down that road. Uh, and also as part of, um, again, hygienic reasons, each student is going to be receiving their own microphone for using at home, just in case we are still doing the virtual learning uh, in September. That's awesome, that's great. So you get, uh, you get some cool toys. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Cool, all right, um, I'm gonna wrap it up there then. Uh, we're, we're just about five o'clock now. Um, so thanks uh, very much to Abe. Uh, for, for your time and for answering the questions. Thanks to everybody that has tuned in. I hope uh, you all enjoy 
the rest of your day and the rest of open house uh keep an eye on your emails if you're waiting for info on our saturday sessions we are still pushing out some info um and we will uh, hopefully see you all uh on, on campus in the future have a great day everyone thank see you elliot you. thanks everyone